This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What's going on, my reefing fam? March here. We are at Coral and Fish Store in the Netherlands. We're still here on our Euro trip. And this is going to be a cool video because today I'm not alone. I am with Paul from Advanced Aquarium Consultancy out of Essex. And we have Patrick from Reef Wholesale, my friend from Canada. And we're going to tour the shop. We're going to check it out. It's, I can tell you immediately, very different. And uh, the guys are drawn over here to fish. You know, I don't do too much on the fish aspect, but we have Canada's largest fish wholesaler. And we have Paul over here, who is also very much into fish. What do you guys think? What are we seeing? We're checking out the beautiful yeah. quarantine here. It's quarantine. Nice, nice to see in a shop. Who does sure. quarantined fish? Yeah. Realistically. Can you name any anyone else? Well, we do, but well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> do, I'll do, do a little bit, don't so, I? But, no, but, but you're talking about a very small percentage. Very small percentage. Very small percentage. Not like this. But it's also on show to the customer. Right, which it's is not really, really, really cool. Mine's all hidden out the back. But this is really, really if cool. you don't know yeah. what I mean when I say quarantine, um, who wants to quickly give us a definition of what true quarantine means? Well, true quarantine is your. You're pretty much trying to guarantee that the fish doesn't have disease, although nobody really guarantees it, but it's giving the fish the best opportunity possible to be disease free. Well, what do you think's in this water? Because I see it's this a little bit. This is nitrofurazone. Big... Right. This is nitro. Do you think these are multiple stages of quarantine? Uh, it could be just the amount of time that they're in each section. Yeah, it could be batches and Yeah, batches. Because look, these systems are all designed separate. This is kind of cool. Oh, they, they flow through. Yeah. And we're actually oh, this, like this in a is, warehouse. This is, this is not. Yeah. No, no, this, this not is a retail a, store. Yeah, it looks like they've converted a warehouse. Section. So, three section, sections on it. How do the fish look? Pretty good. I mean, yeah. you got a little bit of Popeye, but that's no why problem. you're quarantining them. That's the whole you idea. Got, you have like a uh, eye fluke on this guy back here, right? He's got some holes in the side of him. This guy's got some Popeye occurring. Why do they use? That's why they're in quarantine. Why do they use nitro? It's an antibiotic. Like an all-around yeah, general. Yeah, it's a very easy broad-spectrum antibiotic. Delta. We don't see this brand also, too often huh? in North America. But total honesty. So literally, they're showing the whole process, whether it's yeah. a fish with Popeye or yeah. a, a, or previous fluke damage. They're actually at least showing the public what they're doing. That's why you're quarantining yeah. it, though, yeah. right? Yeah. Very that's, transparent. That's exactly yeah. why it's in quarantine. It's like the first so thing that you see as you walk in. What did Paul find? What is it? Well, it's obviously showing you what's in stock or whatever you can do so you can get a price as well. That is so So smart. the customers can come in and they can see the price. I love this. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. We have a this little iPad. This is really, really good. Yeah. I want one Imagine of these. that, the idea you come in, check your price even if you can't find one. That's right. Yeah. Well, there are no prices on the tanks. No. no need to update Which the makes tank. the tanks look tight. Yeah, it makes the tanks look yeah. better. Yeah. Oh, look at this display. Copper bands. Coral and fish store. And again, wow. Oh, oh my God. Look at, these, look at these copper bands. Yeah. Look at all the things. You know why they do that? Wow. To make them uh, ag pork like we have a fry to make them ag. Beautiful little yield. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mm. I assume we need to change those, but yeah. anything like that. You guys think about this tank here. A nice fry pork here. What did you what did you call them? Rye pork here. Hey Patrick. Patrick, have you ever seen rye cordia? Rycordia? Rycordia. That's, that's a new species there. Rycordia. We say Brickordia. Rycordia. So, yeah, you say it wrong. Yeah, you say it wrong. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't can't you argue with that. What is this? Listen, why don't, why don't we just go check it? You know what, these guys are full of rubbish. That's it, I'm just gonna say, I love the center overflow. This is a very cool tank, the weights. Almost, uh, almost four nice sides. Strawberry shortcake up oh, there. Yeah, yeah, look at the color. color. Beautiful yeah. color. Looks very, very mature. It looks like it's a softies tank, and then there's a beautiful strawberry shortcake up there. A little bit of Monty. Low polyps higher than I typically would have put them in a tank. I usually put them low light, low flow. Kind of like this. Look how big the heads can get. Massive. We're like almost quarter size. Some nice hammer. This is an all around really nice tank. Very well done. But which any shop could do if you want to do a little bit of wholesale, not that you want to hear this pack. Yeah. But now I should imagine that the, the wholesale customer 
can log in no, and no, get their I trade price. I doubt it. Right. Because then... I love this. This is glass, actually. All the way wrapped around me. Glass, glass, glass. Glass and glass. It's pretty cool. Like usually we see plexi oh, cool. on wood, but it's, yeah, it's actually, yeah. It's it's glass. actually glass. It's extra clean. It's wrapping around the thing. We have, we have Joe from Aquarium Composition here. It's nice, huh? Yeah, so it's good. They, they did the regular glass, glass and then trim clad or what? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly what it is. Trim clad. Be, must be all custom. Phone. This is not a, a ready-made tank for sure. No, yeah. yeah. Aluminium, aluminium frame. This place is quite big. Oh, yeah. So many fish. They're telling us actually upstairs as well, there is um, some corals down here, and then there's actually more upstairs. Look at these cabbage coral. Wow, lots of cabbage. Julian Sprung yesterday dropped the Latin name of this on me, and I can't remember what it was. What's that? It's cabbage Simularia Jura. Jura, that's it. Very nice. Not too many fish, actually, no, not inside in this tank. Um, black suns, but some unusual yellow suns, if you can compare yeah, with the oh, orange. Suns, those are uh, dendro. Yeah. But same yeah. thing. Captive bred yellow tanks. Yeah. Oh, I see some. Captive bred yellow tanks. Oh, yeah. Must be from Biota, because yeah, really yeah. it's the only company in the world right now that's figured out how to do it. And they come out kind of like this, a little small, a look a little, yeah, a little sickly, but if you manage to get one and begin to grow it, um, this is the, hopefully the future of the hobby, is captive breeding all of them. Everybody, look, there's just so many fish, fish everywhere in this place. Let's continue our journey. What are we looking at? Oh, he's still alive. Look at that, beautiful ray. What a great way of doing cleanup. Yeah. Very smart. Leopard Viserius, massive turbo snails, banded trochus, sand sifting stars, mixed in with some red legs. got some hermits. Mexicans. No, these aren't Mexican red legs, these are a Pacific. Sorry. Like a Pacific Not scarlet. It's pretty unusual. We got some electric yeah. blues here, which are nice. You keep them all separate. That's the right way I to keep like them. I feel like we're walking through a wholesaler right now. This is a retail yeah. shop, but the way that it's set up and the sheer volume of fish, like just look at this tank over there, the ampules. There's got to be over 200. I feel like, because maybe you're new to the channel. Hello, welcome. And if you're not, you've seen some of the other videos. We go through Indonesia, we go through wholesalers. This has a very wholesale, um, industrial sort of feel that completely converted this warehouse. But uh, it's not, you can walk in. You can walk in and buy any one of these. They do wholesale as well. They do as well, yeah. It's both. Some really nice big sea hairs. I love these all around. Great algae eaters. Um, they are not pretty. God did not see it fit to make. Uh -huh, this guy fell. Sorry. Um, did not see it fit to make every animal beautiful. Um, but they do a, a fantastic, fantastic job of just destroying algae. These are like. Call them the cows of the sea. So they're just constantly looking. Oh, look at these starfish. Now this is one I will not keep because I just have, I have no luck personally with keeping them. But we have the blue. Ribbon eels. Ribbon? Yeah. Oh, look at that uh, nice pipefish hanging out right above them. Some purple reef lobsters. Those are the biggest electric blue legs I've ever yeah. seen. Look how they do the really light shit. That's a shell. I thought that was just a piece of rock. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, those, are, no, no. those are the biggest electric blue legs I've ever seen. They're huge. Oh, yeah. That's like that's like you can't see it on the video. That's like three and a half inches across. That's big. Some tuxedo urchins and some white spotted some enemy shrimps. A blue lobster might be a little bit tricky to see because oh, they're yeah. running off some overhead lighting. Uh, lighting. But you have any trick? Do you have any trick to keeping these linkies? Uh The best solution for them is to leave them in the ocean. Oh, you heard it. That's it. Best solution is leave them in the ocean. Um, I had a. A wholesaler from Australia once offered me a bunch for sale. And I said, man, I have no luck with these things. They're just, they're always melting. And he goes, hey, you want to melt some more? Because I think even, even they know <laughs> that uh, they're just, yeah, there's just something you probably should not keep in captivity. And even though the, the you know, the color is striking, sort of like this nudie brink. I don't know how to keep it. No, nah, pretty well impossible. Yeah, pretty well impossible. Sometimes, a lot of the time they come in and you don't order them. And then, so then we'll try different things to keep them alive. And some of them eat sponges and we'll put them in the in the sump and see how they go and sometimes they live for a very long time 
in the sun eating sponges, but it's not like you can intentionally try to keep them alive. I love how these are just like slowly floating around. I can just keep the camera still. So this guy. Other ones will come and bump along. What are we looking at? Yeah. Huge. There's a lot, a lot going in here. This is not what I was expecting actually. Um, when we looked it up on Google, the corals upstairs and where's the coffee too? They said that this was like a, a <laughs> coffee and coral shop. So we came for the coffee and we're just greeted with one of the largest selection of fish I've seen in it. This is a, a crazy a amount of fish, of fish. huh? Yeah, like a lot, a lot, a lot. I feel like I'm at your place almost, you know? Yeah, that's right. Look at this, we have some beautiful red scooters. And whenever they have one, they don't have one. They have a hundred. So, so many. So the good, the bad, and the ugly. These purple tangs, they're super mean. Look at them. They're just going to town on each other. This is like the UFC of fish. In the left corner, from Red Sea, we have a purple tang. And in the right corner, we have the same thing, because they shouldn't be kept together. And uh, if you ever want to add one to a tank, add them last. Don't ever add a purple tang first, because they're just bullies. They're mean, 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 mean fish. And any other tang you try to add in there, they're just going to beat the crap. Look at them. They don't stop. All their fins are torn up on all of them. Um, it's just how they are. But they're beautiful fish. I'm not saying don't keep them. I'm just saying put them last. Put them at the bottom of the pecking order and put them small. Don't add a big purple tang to your tank first because he's just gonna, he or she is just going to become very dominant very fast. And you're going to have trouble adding any other sort of zebra soma. I really like the sink. Oh, I don't know why. I'm just drawn to cleanliness and stainless steel. We get them sometimes, but I mistake What are we looking at? We got a Titan trigger right here. These guys get a little bit large. Very beautiful. Yeah. It's the most feared fish in the sea, I think. But I'll be more scared of them than I am the shark. Why? Why? They're so inquisitive and they always. Yeah. They never, they never. We've got one in the customer's tank that I mean, that I mean, yeah. Every single Joe, time. Joe, can you, we need to test the time. Can you put your finger for me in there? It's for TV, remember. <laughs> Just see what happens. See if he comes. Oh, I'm good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty normal, yeah. yeah but well, I mean, all triggers do that. Even, actually, even yeah. like the red tails will I've do got, that. I've right? got a customer wow. who's got one in his tank. And what a beautiful when meal. I maintain the tank, yeah. I have to literally have. A distraction. A distraction. A distraction. So every single yeah. time it comes up, you're just like, no, no, wait. I've got, I've got one of the sargassums in my tank that every time I go in the tank, he bites my hands, right? Yeah. Every single time. What have you spotted that over there? Yeah, that's right. Uh, exactly. I wish I could keep my royal grammars like this, but I think they'd frown upon it in the UK a little bit. But it's the safest way to keep royal grammars healthy because they always tend to get beaten up or nicked fins or this way. It just keeps the fish perfect. Um, but they're very healthy because they're not all trying to fight with one another. They look great. There's so much water in this place, but everything is so clean. That's one thing I keep noticing here in Europe. There are some shops locally, I'm not going to mention any names, they are hideous. You walk in and there's just stuff. There's bags and brooms and garbage and electrical on the floor. Like, I don't know what it is. Even in North America, this I, I don't. I try not to show you that stuff because I don't want to walk into a store and then immediately start focusing on deficiencies that I see. So, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll kind of pan away or I'll focus a little bit more on um, the nicer things in the store. In my own store, I'm, 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 I'll talk freely and I'll, I'll nitpick and I'll throw myself under the bus. I don't care. If I'm being lazy, I'm, I'm happy to tell you guys. Like, that's the only thing I've seen on the floor so far, which is a hose. It's a hose. But some places that we go to, they're not nice. They're, they don't smell nice. They're not cleanly. So this is this is the exact opposite, and it's kind of what I I find is the norm here in Europe. I've yet to come to a store facility in in the EU or in UK that um, is not presented nicely. Very unusual, but it works. Do you want to see an octopus? Oh yeah, nice little octopus. Yeah, let's do. Oh, yeah. He's out and about, right? I won't eat octopus after watching my octopus feature. That's it. After seeing that, I think everyone should watch it. It's great. Oh, look at that mantis shirt. It's just talking about this. This is, this is what we call the green serpent of death. Uh, this guy will, they, they're an ambush predator, so they go in like a big arch above their, uh, their prey and they wait in a cave. 
and then the fish goes into the cave to go to sleep and it descends down on the fish and a, a starfish that size will take out a tang of seven eight inches wow no way yeah <laughs> okay not reef safe and then this guy right here the pinks the pink brittles like this these all these are also predatory too so all the starfish in this basket are highly predatory yeah brains um, well, they've, they've just done more research on it. Now they're figuring that the brain is in the body and in the legs. Mm. Right? There's, a, there's a new study that came up recently. There's intelligence in every cell. There's a little mantis in here, too. There's, yeah, three, there's a couple mantis. We were just talking in the car right now. I'm going to set up a tank in the shop just for this. Get a little mantis. And we got some Sally Lightfoot's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, big mandarins. They are huge. So they, he had, they have all these mandarins in cups because at this size they'll fight with each other a lot. Yeah. yeah. And they and they'll bite each other and then lock onto each other. Yeah. And then getting they into the is, is well. difficult. How would you ship a fish like that? How do you ship that? How does that come from overseas? Uh, one box, one fish. Wow. Big box. Big box. Same with the nasos as well. Like those nasos would go in like a. 24 inch long bag, so it would be a very long, slender box. Uh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. If a customer wants one pound, you, know, you, notice, you notice they've got all the cleaner wrasse in yeah. cups, right? Because the cleaner wrasse will pick holes in each other, pick holes in the fish. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is really impressive. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, I'll this is not so. what I was expecting. We've got the coral room upstairs. We should, yeah. Let's go check out the coral. We've still got another, and there's a, a coral room and coffee shop. And coffee, we've got to find the coffee. Man, the mandarins are just insane, massive, right? insane. So we don't see basically anywhere. Well, not in Canada, at least. Not for just being able to go up and pick what you want out. Yeah, beautiful really? pieces. This is still the best. Like, the Marco's good, but... Live you, never, you can't beat this thing. You can't beat it. This is still the, the best filtration. What you'd be best off doing is having this for your live rock, and then your man-made Marco, real reef, whatever, then this side, and just letting them... Seed each other. ...mature out properly. What are we all, what are we all doing under the stairs? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this is cool. We've just popped in here for a cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here under the steps. I mean, that is impressive. All branching. Wow. So they're fresh hatched brine that they can feed to the all the tanks. It's yeah, there's loads. I mean, this is, yeah. this is that's like, proper. This is proper. This is wholesaling brine. Yeah. This is what you need. This is a good use of space. Yeah, like, this is a good use of space. <laughs> how tall are you? Look, look at us, like under. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> You're like hobbits in here. Yeah. Well, I mean, really cool. Right. That's not rust that's on these beams. That's all brine trim. Yeah. Right? Salty. <laughs> <laughs> Look how we just walk a in here. Shrimp we didn't tell Isaacs, them we're coming. Daphnia. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel like we're the fish inspectors. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you have under the stairs? Open the fridge! Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Video's not done. It's just the beginning. Let's go look. That's let's, the first half. Let's go see the floral section. This is a double decker special. Wow. Two for one video. This is a bright fucking shot. Look at retail store. Wow. Oh my god, they got retail store as well. Oh. Wow. Incredible. This is not what we expected. Look at this. We walk over here. Just full blown retail. I kind of like how all of the hardware is completely separate. We don't have the space for that where we are. If you've seen our shop, we have the tanks down the middle. And then wrapped around that, we have the. Uh, all the hardware because we're just so tight on space. Um, Paul's shop is about the same. If you've seen the videos or if you've been to Essex, he's got his coral beds right down the middle. And then I think that's a typical setup, but here they have lots and lots of space. Look at these blocks. That's that's how they do their stands. Very uh that gone eh? What are we looking at? Oh wow. That's size it's like that was that a uh, volleyball size brick gone eh? Spectrum, uh, white spectrum on the softies. Oh my goodness. Are these T5s? Yes, they're T5s. I don't think I'd, I'd ever see the day. Still running T5s. Still awesome lights. Actually, they're running T5s everywhere. Look at this. I thought you guys had um, electricity crisis over here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I think we can take that back, you know. 
How much is that? 89. Look at the long tentacles on it. It's more like the willow type, yeah. I think. I wouldn't put that in my tank, though. So we can no, I know. That takes over the whole damn thing, right? Is this Centelia? No, oh, it's a dry area. It's a real, a real fast drive. Hey, man, the prices are really reasonable. Yeah. That reasonable. They look like they've cultured these in the store. They look like they've actually cultured them. They're not Indone typical Indonesian bases. So I think they've grown them. This is what if we it, call blue pineapple back home. Yeah. If there was one coral I wanted to take, um, that would be that. Yeah. This is just wood. I'm always intrigued about how they they set it up. So oh. we just have blocks, and then it's glued oh. with like or cemented. Oh yeah, maybe some cement to a piece of ply. That's all you need. Very simple. Does the job. And then in the back, look at this. You notice how they have their their sump is basically a all in one. I've never seen that. Instead of a traditional sump underneath, yeah. Just one, just like a, a large reef casa tank. They've just taken the last about maybe 16 inches off the back, done a coast to coast overflow. And this is all you really need, right? If you're doing. I, I agree with this. Yeah. All my tanks are this height. Yeah. This is all you really need. You just need a spot for a skimmer and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to get a nice height so you can work on it easily. You don't have to break your back trying to get under the tank. Um, I don't see any filter floss or socks, but you don't really need it. There was even more tubes Yeah, there were way more tubes. Look at the fitting that they've got. Yeah. And this is just this is just as dull. I always said that if I had to do frag box again, that I would do corals and coffee. So I would take this sort of approach, have more like a cafe, I mean, coffee nut, but then at the same time. Uh, have beautiful tanks around the store and that you could shop out of so it'd be sort of a, a hybrid kind of shop so if anyone's thinking about doing a core a store maybe there's an idea if you know if you're slow on sales on the coral you can sell the coffee that's something that I noticed when we went to Japan earlier in the year there's a lot of hybrid shop so we went to like a bike store that happened to be a brewery that so, was my favorite. yeah and a cafe actually you get a coffee a beer and get your bike fix at the same time so you kind of have customers from different niches and different angles there was um, a movie rental place that doubled as a comic store so they kind of like don't put all their eggs in one basket so I always thought corals and coffee they just they just go hand in hand so just just food for thought for, for someone up there look how big the plugs are of Zoas Massive, like nice blue zoas too. Look, very nice and like full, full plugs. That's something I noticed yesterday. At Vivarium was the frags are a lot bigger. I think they just expect more from a frag here. Like, look at these. These are basically little the colonies. Yeah. Mini colonies, yeah. Beautiful AOIs too. We're used to seeing one head, one or two heads. These have. Look at these. Twenty-seven bucks. Oh my god, I would buy every twenty-seven. That's very good. Those yeah. look like the original Space Monsters, the Tyrese. Yeah. I would love to take home, I would take home all of them if I could. Uh, very nice size plugs. And then same idea, we have our all-in-one design here. No sumps, very unusual. It's very smart, obviously it's working, the tanks look really good. Yeah. I don't see a lot of fish, actually. I see almost none, a few in the corner. Two fish, yeah. You would it. expect to see a lot more just for like uh, management of the algae. And this is really cool too, they've util they utilized the wall really well. Look how it wraps around, starting from this corner here, all the way around as one single continuous tank. And it's actually genius. I always wanted to do a continuous tank down the middle of our store. And it's because if you can get, hello, aquarium composition, if you can get a good healthy population of fish, so I really believe in fish for algae management, they can parade the entire tank. You have 6 feet, 16, 26, 36, 46, 50, over 50 feet. Um, even if you have fish that have port, like aggression towards each other, it doesn't matter because you got 50 feet to figure it out, bro. You want to fight? You go over there. I'll go over here, and they can just like do what they do in the ocean. They can just constantly um, graze and, and keep the entire system clean. Um, that is not the case here with this algae. What do we have? You see this algae here? I want to get someone else's opinion. I like when someone else says what I'm thinking. Follow you for a second. Come. This, what's this algae called here? What do you call this stuff? What's that? That algae that's growing up. Uh, that's uh, bryopsis. Bryopsis. Yeah, that's which is a bit one. of a bastard to get rid of. It really it it lo it, the truth is, it shows that the water quality is superb because it will only grow in superb water quality. You can't water change it out. No. no. And, but 
Oh, how do you get rid of it? Every store ends up with an awful lot of common corals that we can't sell, but they've made their own stony coral gardens of things that are easy. So stylos, and that is fantastic little idea. Christmas tree worm rock. So how do you get rid of this in the tank? What kind of fish? Uh, no, flu no fish will eat it. Aha, that's what yeah. I wanted to hear. No fish will eat it. They don't so like you it. need fluconazole. Yeah, flu fluconazole. Yeah. And it's reef safe, toss it in, and the stuff will melt within three to four yeah. weeks. Wow, look at the colour. Nice what is that? They're, fe they're feather stars. Oh, yeah, they're feather stars. Yes. Jeez. They're all just curled up. I've oh, never seen that colour feather star. I've never seen that one. The colour on that's unreal. The same yeah. one in. They're, oh, they're, they're uh, dragons. Golden dragon, yeah. yeah. It looks this like is, This is what they should be doing. Blue. This is a nice, crappy one right here. Yeah. They like to go in a nice high flow area. What lights are these? Yeah. Yeah. These, these ones are probably I can't ID yeah. them, I'm trying to and figure it out. Yeah. Geisman, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. We have Geisman LED across some T5, so we have a hybrid. Color is very good. I don't know if the camera is picking up the color, but um, very, very bright, very nice color on, on all of these actors. And there's a lot. Yeah, it's Geisman, Geisman with T5. Yeah. Yeah, so the bryopsis, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. I only know one person ever that got rid of it with manual removal, and her name's Tia. She happens to work at the shop. Other than that, it's really, it's really got a strong foothold. It doesn't come out easy. I'm going to give you another little secret or tip. Emerald crabs do eat it. I have a video. If you go way, way, way back, I'm talking five, six years ago, I do have a video of uh, emerald crabs munching on it, and I have the video proof to show you. Look at these stylos. These are great. Everything looks super healthy. Lots of Duncan, lots of bird's nest, tortusas, lots of deep water, Montipora stellatus, more tortusas, green slimer, classic corals, stuff that grows, Basilopora, pagodas, more pagodas. I like how they've organized everything too in terms of species. We have all of them sort of together, all the pagodas. So, oh, look at these. Some nice worms, some baby clams. Oh man, that one really caught my eye. That is a special little clam right there. Absolutely beautiful. And there's just a lot, a lot of coral. There's a, a lot here to look at. Oh, look at the size of these. These are the um, Hollywood Stunner. Latin name Echnopora lamellosa. But we call it Hollywood Stunner. And the thing grows like, really grows like a weed. If you want something to grow quick, look for this one. It's usually pretty inexpensive. We always have it for sale in the shop. Let's see what the boys over there have found. There's just, there's just so much, and these are really wide. Like typically, three to four feet is, I think, what I see like as an industry standard. These are five. These are five by twelve, so a lot bigger than normal. Just green star polyp for days. Look at these rocks. These run 135 euros. It's a little bit on the pricier side, but it varies country to country. If I haven't said already in the video, we are in the Netherlands. Oh man, we call these cat eyes. I would definitely take home. Uh, a rock of these, some candy apple reds. It's kind of cool seeing corals on the other side of the world. A lot of them have the same name, some of them don't, but it's pretty cool when you have accepted sort of trade names um, for the same coral. Like these ones they call Makassar polyps, we call these ones pink hippos. And look at how many polyps on each one. Palutoas, these they call Krakatoas, we call them x -Men. It's pretty busy in here too, a lot of people shopping. We're here on a Sunday afternoon. Um, on our way to Vivarium, the second day of the show. We shot some content yesterday. We're going to shoot some more later today. Um, some of the high-end LPS. Looks like some of the cherry corals. I like how they have the prices. All of the prices are written on Everything is clear, yeah. Everything is transparent. I've always been a fan of that. I think that's how it should be. These ones look like the charging per head, which is very common. We do about the same, but often we'll frank them up because I find people want them um, in smaller pieces, instead of getting one large one like this, you know, for 300 bucks, they prefer to buy five or six smaller individual heads. Again, the cleanliness, just throughout the whole store, is super clean. Whatever they do have out, it's like organized, you know, all the heaters are in one bin. You don't get that sort of smell that you get in some shops. It doesn't smell like coral, huh? No, it smells fresh. I like that smell, personally. I get used to it over the years. It's a very, very nostalgic for me. Really nice collection of torches here. But I like how they don't have their... Is it coming through on video how high definition the lighting, the lighting is, is superb. in this water? 
You know yeah, Kaiser? yeah, no, I think so. Yes, Kaiser. And these are also Giesman. Giesman I've never actually seen these lights. These are new to me. Yeah. It just looks like that. They look great. Look at these torches, torches, torches. Holy grails. Per cup, I guess that means per, per head, per polyp. Yeah. Torches have become so expensive like in the past five or six years. It's just crazy. There used to be no names. Keep that in mind when when we first started, when I first started, there was no names for no, there were no 95 names. percent. It was, everything was Latin names, and I like this. We also didn't get torches quite like this at that time, right? And I think it's as no. we've seen more of the blue lights come in, and they've learned about using blue lights for diving. That we're starting to see the cool stuff like the holy grails and hellfires I and like this white bananas. It gives a very nice pop to the coral. Yeah. I'm so used to seeing black. It's a nice kind of movement away from the black. And there's no algae. They look. Like they do a really good job of yeah, cleaning. Even on the back, there's no no coralline that's growing. So someone's got to be going in here and cleaning these baffles in between these um, the dividers. The tanks, yeah, because yeah. otherwise they would be completely covered with coralline, and that goes for the entire thing. You don't see it anywhere. So someone uh, someone is probably in charge of glass scrubbing or is OCD like and gets off on it. We have our new employee in the store, Kavina, and she is the glass queen. Like. She was cleaning a piece one day and I said, okay, it looks good. And she goes, it's not done, March. And she just kept on going at it and kept cleaning it until it was um, perfection. My friend Alejandro from Colombia is like that. Anytime he would come in the store, he would just go, grab a rag instinctively. And he's not on the hobby anymore, but he just loves to clean the edge. And you can tell that whoever's doing it here, there's definitely care going into these tanks, huh? Oh, yeah. You well, don't see touching corals. You don't see um, not too much coral Well, they're also death. grouped together really nicely. Yeah. So, like, you're you not going to see stinging too. and there's a bit of space. You yeah. notice that these are five feet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're five. I've never seen five by 12 as a coral bed. It looks like it's a bit more than five feet, even. Maybe. We have some very... Well, they become rare for us, but these are the uh, blue velvet five, five, two. Five, two? Is yeah, that well, your I'm five, spin? four, so that's a little longer than I am. Very cool. Very simple. Like, there's no apex controllers anywhere. No, there is no fancy. There's, you can see everything is taking place in the sump right here. There's actually no. There's not even a power head on the tank. If you look around, there's no MP40s. There's no gyres. There's no octopus wave pumps. There's no jabal. There's nothing. It's just the water flowing here into the back. Our coast to coast overflow. On this one, we have a large sponge that probably gets cleaned out. And uh, this one doesn't even have a skimmer. Yeah, this one's got no skimmer. This one is skimmerless, this LPS tank. It's really and just... And it looks like... Some sort of I, bio I media. I know what type of media that oh, is in, in there. An reactor and then oh. some large... What are we running? Canister? UV? Canister filters and UV. So the canister is probably for your carbon and GFO. Mm -hmm. So you probably have carbon and GFO in those. Super probably low they tech. have extra filters and then that way they could just bring the new filter out and just swap it. It looks like it's bare bottom on the bottom of these. It's not even live raw. There's no live rock, it's so bare bones, it's so minimal, and it, it's so clearly effective. I think a lot of times we overthink what we're doing. Overcomplicate. Overcomplicate it. This guy in um, Olivier in uh, Krakow, at a, at a, we did a, a video there at his oh, store. One sump. One sump, and he made a really cool comment. We were talking about the worst thing for a reef aquarium. The worst thing is the hobbyist, and, and I don't know why that line just really stuck with me. Sometimes we just we overthink it, we touch too much, we meddle too much, and uh, clearly these guys have figured it out because everything looks absolutely fantastic. We have one, again, this one is one large skimmer, and that's it. No wave makers. I don't see any uh, dosers. I should ask them actually what kind of salt they use. I, you know, I always forget. I should ask this right at the beginning. Let me go ask. Can I ask you a quick question? What kind of salt are you using on the system here? So which salt? Which brand of salt, yeah. We just use natural seawater. Natural seawater, oh yeah, wow. Sea water. And then are you water changing the systems? Like yeah. how often? Like we try to do it once a month. Once a month and then how big, like what percentage would you say? Like for sure 50%. 50, oh wow, 50%? Yeah, once a month natural seawater. That is the, the key to success here. I'm, that's pretty cool. We don't have uh, that luxury in Canada. No. no. So this is the hardware side. Oh, it's so quiet in here. It's nice and cool. You don't realize how loud some of those fans are until you move away. Very organized. We've got a nice plumbing section here with everything oh, inventory. Oh man, I love this. Yeah. I used to have a lot more plumbing in the store and yep. then uh, 
I didn't. It just became a pain. These yeah. are cool fitting that we don't really get at home. I didn't. We were kind of like this in the back hallway, and then it was a pain to restock. I'm like, what are we doing? I'm not a plumbing store. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's nice. They have. It is nice. Everything you need, all the parts, super well laid out, super organized, super clean. I think a lot of people watch these videos to try and learn before opening their own shop. Hey, Jamie, what's up, Underwater Gardener, if you're watching? Uh, actually, if you're in Florida and you're looking for a reef casa tank, you have to hit up Underwater Gardener. He just got his first shipment. I should have said that sooner in the video, but it came to me when it did. But if a lot of people, I think, watch these trying to learn um, in hopes of opening maybe one day their own, you know, down the road, maybe not, but this is how, this is how you want to do it. Super, super organized super clean we we we're visual creatures you know half of our brain is is used just to process what our eyes are taking in and you know that saying like we eat with our eyes it's kind of like the same idea here you know you purchase with your eyes uh here we have the, the rock i really like this this bin all the different types nice to see some red sea we don't have these yet but they're coming soon Reef mat 250s. Dutch synthetic reefing. There's a lot of brands. Every single reef yeah. Here. This looks like this is their their version of ESV. Yeah, that does look like their version. But of even ESV. even the sticker. Store. I mean, like even the feel, the logo. Yeah, feels right. very like ESV. Yeah. We have some freezers. This is something that we should probably have. But don't. I run down to the basement. I had two of these uh, back to back. They failed on me, and the warranty sucked. And I'm like, I'm done with these freezers. Yeah, but. Very nice chillers. That's something we don't see too often. T5, dying breed, except for this store, apparently. We have our Jabao section. The, the one thing with Jabao, I do like the pumps. Uh, this model, SOW. I don't like these. These are the knockoff Neros. They're, in, in my experience, they're not reliable. They um, All they tried to do was knock off the Nero uh, in terms of looks, but they don't last, in my opinion. So we stopped selling these. These are great. This is actually the return pump we use in the shop. My issue with them is there's just so many. There's so many models and they're always changing. So, you know, SOW, 4, 3, MOW, SLW, ALW, SLW, SL, AOW. It's why? What? Why so? It, it's very confusing. And they're always changing. And then you have Jabao, and then you'll have Jacquard, and then you'll have Fish Street, but they're all one they're all the same with three different names on it it's just confusing um you know return pump okay anyways i think you get the point uh if you could just narrow it down if you guys i don't think they're watching there in china but if you guys are very confusing okay that's the end of my little rant um some tunzi let's ask paul let's ask another store owner what they think i don't know what what's this company here water or something never heard of it i don't know if those are any you ever heard of this company water socks or something no, no. never heard. yeah i never heard of it they look nice <laughs> Think about this. Brilliant. Brilliant. You, huh? know me, you know me and tidiness, and this is so beautifully tidy again, so well laid out. Lots of stuff I don't even see, like this brand. I don't see there's a nice seahorse, roughly friendly 120 all in one nano down there. Very nice presentation. As well, you don't often, I can't even, I've never seen these for sale. I've seen some of these, but not these sizes. You still do it. Yeah, still kidding. <laughs> <laughs> go around, go around the corner. Look at the parts section that they've done. Their own branding on all the plumbing. Oh, look at that! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how you know he's that impressed. That is oh. fantastic. Because oh. you always end up never having the price. It's so funny that Patrick went to the exact yeah. same part. <laughs> no, no, normally no prices at work, so it's really difficult for the staff to to, to be able to sell. Yeah, pipe it's almost parts. like when they need help, they got to come. Yes, they'll they call you up and me and ask me. But at least here, you can just pick it off the shelf. That's a very clever idea, and one I'll definitely be removing it's and taking back to the UK. That's why yeah, I like traveling like this, is you pick up, yeah. even yeah. sometimes it's just that one idea that's yeah. such a game changer. Yeah. At every store you get one idea. Yeah. Like every time you go somewhere you're like, that's a genius idea. Look at the Red Sea, the way they've set it up. They got the sign, the lights, authorized dealer, the nets off to the side, the skimmers. You know, I wish, I wish we had space. I think about moving to another store sometimes. But rent is quite expensive in Toronto. I live across the street, which is a nice feature. Yeah, that's an amazing that. feature that you can't compete against. That it's just perfect. And um, so I'm, I think about moving. I think about having more space. But in the summer, it is so slow, and I'm so thankful that the rent is so inexpensive. So even this checkout counter, look how nicely it's stunning.
Yeah. Yes. Can we find out if it's exactly the same light that you're using on this row of table, coral tables? Is there Joe around or something to know? Or? I'm going to add yeah. my... Open box section. That's what it looks like. It must be. Yeah, it must be, because these are right? old, yeah, 20% off. That's kind of cool that they have sort of, you know, maybe a used or open box section of the store. That's, that's quite smart. Let's see what Paul found. We're going to jump around to the other side. Hello, Vitalis, our preferred fish food. What has he found? German, isn't it? I, don't, I don't know that brand He's at all. sterilizer. Yeah, have you yeah, ever seen that brand? The open bowl. Hmm. I know, but it's not an open bowl, is it? Really, it can't be, because otherwise it would blind you. This is a little surprising to see, like, everything so nicely, and then your Radeon is just on a second shelf, tucked away. <laughs> yeah, you, all these other brands. Yeah, usually you walk in and it's like, ba-boom, Ecotech, AI, Neptune, Aperture, America, and then here... Yeah, but this, I think, don't you get the impression that they've got that just because they probably should because someone might come in and ask for it. they've got their own Actually, it looks thing. like Maybe. they yeah. probably don't focus no, on just... Uh, this looks like the lighting uh, section here. It's just a little surprising. If you've seen in our store, they get quite a large feature. This is just... We're sitting here under a refactory to the next... to the side of Aquamedic, our Red Star a Red fish. Star, yeah, some just... Ta-da, here's our... Here's a, you know, consider the Lamborghini of LED lights in our market. And here it's... Just another one on the shelf. Yeah, just another one on the shelf. Whatever. It's just interesting to see how it's done. Yeah, it's supposed to be good. Aquamedic. Those are great. Oh, pretty cool. A lot of different brands, which is... um. It's nice to see. I used to deal with this. You guys sell just about everything. This is like, I don't know why you would ever need this. I, I would find myself needing it, but if you need a piece of acrylic overflow for some sort of project or DIY, they got oh, it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. it is cool. But so you got your coast to coast overflow, and now you can pick this up to put it you on. You got to be in it for a while to appreciate. Yeah, that's right. A yeah. pre-made cut piece of thing. I think most hobbyists or new hobbyists would walk by and. Not look at it Wouldn't twice. Wouldn't even look at this twice. Yeah. They, they go, what is this piece of junk on the shelf? But right? as someone in the industry with the, a with the store and who's yeah, built stuff and looked for this, you're like, damn, these guys have really, you know, they've really thought of everything. This one I think is, I've seen these ones before. And then, so you glue this on and then your teeth oh, can come off and be clean. I like that. Right? I like that. So you that. can take this out, you can go and clean them. What a cool shop. Family run operation. His dad's been running it since 1980. 1990, sorry, 33 years, and then this location that we're in today since 2008. I've got to buy something. It feels right. So, show us what you found. What are you going home with I, today? I'm going home. What are you going home with today, Paul? I'm going home with probably something I could probably buy a wholesale at home if I really looked, but I've never seen these before. A top-down viewer with removable orange filter. You have a, a great voice for product demonstration. <laughs>